we start the month of June here with this episode, I forgot once again that this game has no autosave feature. And if you don't end a, an episode on playing a game, you have to manually save it. So once again, I had to basically redo the entire last month, tried to get a similar record to where we were. I believe we were just over or just under 500. So we're sitting here at 30 and 28 to start this episode. And for the gameplay portion of this episode, I think we're going to do another critical situations episode. It feels like it's been a long time since we've done that in this series. So no full gameplays, but we'll check into some you know, late game situations and see if we can either come back or hold the lead in those situations. And of course, with it being June and the and the draft so close, we will also have our final draft preview. Um, before we do that, though, we are in the month of June, so I'd like to see just a little bit of kind of where ratings have changed. It looks like people have gone up and gone down uh, quite a bit. And Russell Mosqueda now hitting 300 with 11 home runs here. Uh, he is going up on every stat, and so very good year for him. Both of his hitting versus righties are now in the 80s. Both of his hitting versus lefties are in the 70s. Good all-around player, and of course, drafting him as a, a generational prospect there wasn't really going to be much doubt if he was going to be good. Rincon is on a cold streak. Looks like his average is coming down a bit, but his home runs are still there. As you can see, his power is going up, particularly against righties which is good because of he's one of our few non-switch hitters on the team. Contact versus left, he's down a little bit. Vision as well. Looks like he's swinging out of the zone. More than you'd expect. Sandoval, more of kind of a calm year than we're used to seeing with him. He always overperforms, but plus seven to discipline is really good for him. I uh, like what we're seeing there. His power versus left, he's back down into the 70s, though. More of kind of an all-around hitter against righties and then a power-only hitter against lefties still, though. McIntyre on a cold streak here. He still hasn't gotten much better in hitting. The only thing going down, though, is his discipline. So he's gone up a little bit this year, but not too much. Gill on a hot streak, and he very, very much so needed it. He's still overall gotten worse as a hitter this year. He hasn't had a great year uh, at the plate. But 243 and 7 home runs. Hopefully this let a recent hot streak can start to improve his ratings a bit. Buster Pringle is definitely having a rebound year after a tough year last year, of course. His ERA is down nearly two points. His whip is down nearly 0.3. Uh, win percentage is way up there as well. War, he actually has a positive war where he was just straight up replacement level player last year. And we need him to be good. And he has been so far about a third of the way through this season. Tom Williamson here. Of course, the guy we picked in, in the first round last year, he might be very close to making his MLB debut. With what he's doing here, with where his ratings are at, I think it's going to be sometime this year. There's something I kind of want to do. I think, when do we play the Mets? We play the Mets in July. Thinking we maybe aim for July, see if he's ready to ready to make his uh, MLB debut against, of course, another generational player, the guy that we passed on. I want to see if he's actually playing at the MLB level this year, or if he's being groomed in the lower levels. He is a third baseman. He is currently at the AAA level, so we'll have to see if he's making his debut yet. He's hitting 273 with 11 home runs uh, at AAA, so yeah. He's, he's been performing. If he's made the MLB by, by the time we play, which I think there's a chance he will. Um, is he on the 40 man? That's what I need to know. If he's not on the 40 man, I imagine he is not on the 40 man roster. So I imagine he actually won't make his debut. But um, so maybe that game against the Mets won't be as important. Definitely want to see a Higgins versus Williamson game at, at some point in this series. But probably not happening in july but we'll still look out uh just in case but uh yeah williamson looks on track to come into the mlb at just 18 years old ordonez um he's looking pretty good he has 15 saves two blown saves not bad there era is down whip is up and his uh war hasn't been great though 
but uh, he's getting saves at a pretty decent rate, so hard to be mad at that. Allen Evans in a small sample size is actually hitting like I expect him to, you know, obviously not much of a power threat, but he should be hit getting these high averages and uh, Chet Rodriguez, I actually think we're deep enough into the season. He's hitting under 200 and Evans is hitting over 300. I think it's time to make the change. Uh, they're at that left field spot. Evans has been so much better than he has, and so let's let's reward him for it, shall we? Um, here we go. And that change has been made. If there's anybody else we should look at, I think we also want to look at Darren Roman. He's up to 14 home runs. He's going down though because of his potential, which really sucks. His Power versus lefties is way up, so. But like contact versus lefties down by six. Um, he continues to hit as well as he he has hit this year, which is really good. Um, I think we're gonna have to step in and update his potential and maybe at least get him to where he's not going down and all these things so much. But I want to see a little bit more longevity in the successful season before I make that decision. But there you have it, uh, Edgar Torres. He's on a cold streak right now, but it's still been pretty productive um, at the AA level as well. Um, just looking at his ratings, both his hits per nine and strikeouts per nine being in the 50s is still concerning to me. Um, but I could see us giving him at least a shot, maybe a September call-up kind of shot um, this season. So there you have it. There's kind of how the team is performing. Let's now hop into the critical situations portion of this episode. Before we hop into any critical situations, we actually haven't had any about a week and a half into this. We do, however, have a big injury to Carl McIntyre, and we're going to have to fix our lineups. I think the easiest solution is to do something like this with, of course, Velasquez getting time. He is kind of our primary. I don't care about the no DH stuff as much, but we still gotta, of course, change them. Not Curtis Nicholson. That would not be a good center fielder. And then we'll just bring this in because we don't care because it's no DH and that does not exist anymore. It should honestly just be taken out of the game. But Alden Evans on a hot streak hitting 300, going to be our leadoff man now. And then Velasquez is going to slide into that sixth spot. Uh, we'll probably actually honestly put him more in that eight spot. I think he deserves to go that high in, uh, in in the batting order. All right, here we go. We've got the first critical situation tie ball game. The Giants have a walk off opportunity that we have to prevent here. And that's going to be the goal. Let's just make sure we got this going. Willis getting the head 0-2 in the count. That's going to be a soft tapper over to third. An accurate throw from Mosqueda will send us to extras. Let's see if our team here can close out the victory. That one by Gill hits decently well, but it's not going to be good enough. So... One out. Still, of course, have that extra base innings runner. Strike three looking, dude. Tough AB for Rincon. And now it's up to Mosquera to make sure we don't give Giants another easy walk-off opportunity. Except he's going to be intentionally walked, so he's not even going to get the chance two for four today.
Hoyer is going to ground out on the first pitch. Nothing doing for us in the 10th. That's a soft tapper. It's going to advance the runner to third. Something we failed to do in our inning. That is just a pitch too easy on a full count. It's going to be enough for the tag and the Giants are going to get the home win four to three in the 10th inning. Terrible offense in the 10th and then just a horrible pitch there with the first count. Way too easy. Can't leave it over the plate like that and a deserving loss based on the one and a half innings I saw for sure. Here's ourselves a second critical situation here. Up by one, bottom of the ninth. Can Bartolo Ordonez close out the Angels? Let's hop in and find out here. I don't know what the out situation is. I don't know if it was shown on the screen and I just forgot to look at it or if it wasn't shown. There's a man, of course, on third, one out. Big situation for Ordonez. Got to get a strikeout here. His strikeouts per nine is a pretty big number. Of course, important for a pitcher, but PJ Friedel has been pretty good today. 2 4 4. That is lifted. It's going down, and the Angels are going to tie this up. A blown save for Ordonez. Would have been taggable even if it was caught. And that's why I don't love Ordonez, man. He might, he was having a pretty decent year in simulation, but it feels like when we watch the episodes, I just have no confidence in the dude closing out the wins. That is crushed to left. Willis, you dumb. Oh my gosh. I'm sending this guy down. That's it. Both critical situations. He's just straight throwing the game, man. Who is this guy and why is he pitching for us? Holy crap. Get him out of here, man. Now we've got a two run deficit. We were two outs away from clinching this game and now we're likely to lose. Ugh. Alden Evans lifts it to center. And that was not even a competitive inning. We just got absolutely manhandled in a late game situation. Once again, these critical situations haven't been kind to us so far. Here's another critical situation. Can we finally get one to go for us? Got a one run deficit here with Mosqueda at the plate. Strikeout swinging from Mosqueda to start it off. Oh boy, I might just have to stop jumping into these because. Good night. Have we done one positive thing yet? That's it. How are you looking at that pitch? All right, yep, I'm done watching these critical situations. We've had. One where we were ahead, one where it was tied, and one where we were behind and needed the comeback. We couldn't do any of those things. We've lost all three kinds of the situations, and this team clearly just wasn't built for these late game moments, and I'm not watching them anymore. So how about we shift gears and talk about the draft? All right, let's go ahead and talk about this draft, and first thing we want to talk about is... Our pick situation, we have the number five pick in this draft. We have no extra picks at all, which we really have had throughout this franchise because we're not losing players that are being signed by their teams because the only players we're really losing are zero overall prospects. And now with the number five overall pick, I think the number one thing I'm looking for is a bat that can provide some power 
and I don't see any elite options for that this year, although I do see some that I, that could play that role. Another position I'm really looking to acquire in this draft is closer. I'll show you some options right here. As you can see, our scouts think the number one prospect in this draft is a closer. We'll look at him and some other options as well. But I don't think, even though I do like some of the closer options in this class, I don't think any of them are worth picking at five. Just because I do think there are some intriguing bat options there. And I think that's just a little bit more of a priority for me than than closer is although it's honestly getting pretty close i think closer we can't get a good one this year i might be selecting it in the first round next year no luck but let's talk about some bat options i think the best bat that could be available for us with the fifth pick is garrett guerra the first baseman uh, out of rhode island he's a 18 year old switch hitter now those are projected to be a, an elite power back like i said i don't think that's going to be available for us here there's no you know generational prospect level power bat uh, in this draft although i think garrett guerra can be quite good with that bat of course offers not only power but good vision discipline and contact as well which i think is just key to being a good hitter if you have only power but not much vision and discipline i don't think your power is going to truly be unlocked and so i think he'd be an excellent pick uh, just uh, an all-around great offensive player. Defensively, not great. He has really good reaction, actually. But, you know, the fielding and, and the arm isn't anything special. It's not, like, awful either, though, right? His accuracy is probably going to be somewhere in the 40s. Strength, somewhere in the 50s. Fielding, 50s as well would be my projection. And then reaction, somewhere in the 70s. That's, like, not a, an awful fielder. But I think he could definitely play left field. I know it's not one of his positions right now. But kind of with the, those corner outfield spots, I think it's pretty easy to learn those spots. And so I'd be willing to move him there. And he could just be kind of a mix of, uh, you know, Chet Rodriguez, who we've had there for most of the last season and change until we decided to put Alden Evans back there because Rodriguez was struggling. I think he can kind of be like a Rodriguez type prospect, but with actual upside and also of course, getting another switch hitter in our lineup is just very, very tempting. And now, I don't think he's going to have this really high potential that you want, you know, with the top five pick. Typically, I like to go for at least a gap of 15 between overall and potential. And we see it's only 13 here. Not super far off of that, but I think we have a ton of, like, really high upside guys. And I, I, I'm just looking at this point for somebody that can come in and help early on in their career. And I think Garrett, Garrett can do just that. Another guy who I think is a little bit worse of a, a power hitter, but could actually be an asset in the field and maybe play right field long term for us would be Fabio Portillo. His power projects to be more kind of maybe high 40s, low 50s on the right, and then kind of maybe low to mid 50s on the left as he is a righty, righty hitter. He has pretty good contact. And again, I do value somebody that at least has a decent starting spot for vision and discipline. Not going to be terrible there. Projects to be maybe high 40s, low 50s discipline and similar for start, uh, vision as well. And then he actually is going to have pretty decent fielding and a pretty strong arm to start off as well, which is something that we kind of lack um, in our outfield. going to be very slow. And so, um, of course, he also doesn't have corner outfield as one of his positions. But uh, like I said, with that position, I'm not super tied to it. So I think Fabio Portillo a good option as well might not be available at uh at five i think uh there's a good chance one of these guys is between Guerra and portillo and they're probably my favorites we've now seen uh carl mcintyre go down in two straight seasons this isn't a power hitter at all but he could be a good a good player to maybe be the successor successor at uh at center field i don't think he's a great prospect despite being ranked as third uh, he doesn't have a ton of interest in us so i think howard lambert is going to be a good pick for somebody else i just think he has a skill set that's pretty redundant with this team you know the contact speed archetype we have several of those on the roster i think it's not a bad idea to maybe get somebody less injury prone to replace carl mcintyre in the future but um i just don't know if we're at that point quite yet miguel lerma i'm still looking for a guy that can be a, a fielder uh, in the kind of the middle infield. Don't think he's quite that guy either. I think he's another guy that's going to be a good pick for somebody else. Just not quite the archetype, 
I'm looking for um, when we ended up scouting him. Uh, Rick Carros is uh, somebody with a big arm. Bit of contact. His uh, power is not terrible against uh, righties, but it's not anything great either. I'd probably put him as my third favorite right now from the guys that we've previewed. Uh, I think Guerra's the guy I want the most in this class. I just think he's fitting what I need. I just want offense, you know. I don't I don't really care too much about defense. He could play DH or he can play left field easily. I just need power, and I think he's the best power guy we've looked at so far. After that, I'd put Portillo. After that, I'd put Carlos. And then these two guys I just don't think I would draft. I'll let somebody else get a good pick with them. Um, and for hitters, and then there are a couple of guys that I'm scouting right now from Discovery that I like as well. Jeffrey Cordova, depending on what he looks like when we actually get him to 100% scouted, might actually be the person that slides into that number two favorite slot over, over the catcher Portillo. I think Guerra is still going to be somebody that I like over him, but Cordova could be pretty close. 18-year-old hitter out of Cuba looks to be... A pretty good power hitter. And so just want to get, of course, that extra 40%, which we will get here in this last week. He'll be up to 100%. Also getting up to 100% will be Mark Weller, who also has a chance, depending on what he looks like after being scouted, to slide into that second or third spot. And so I think uh, the first pick is, you know, for us being a week away from the draft, still up in the air. I, mean, I think Gara has a good chance of being there, and I... I have a hard time even with these two i think liking either of them more uh mark eller has a chance to be a better fielder though with some great speed too so i don't know maybe if eller actually ends up kind of on the high end of his rankings once we scout him more he might actually end up up there but the fact that our scouts have him ranked as 34 i think he's gonna not be quite as high but maybe a guy in the second round if we could get this guy in the second round i'd be pretty ecstatic i think uh, again, it just depends on what he looks like after scouting. So those are kind of the high-end prospects at the position spots that I that I found in this class. Of course, scouted a few more that didn't end up working out, <laughs> and they ended up being pretty bad. But those are the guys that I scouted that I liked. Let's now go to pitcher. Pitcher, I think we did scout a couple of starters. I guess we can start with those guys. Um... I uh, scouted mostly just not ranked guys, the guys that we can maybe get later in the class. I think Omar Marrero could be somebody. I'm not going to take a starting pitcher until earliest round three so that he'd have to make it that far. I don't know if he will, but if he does, I actually like this pitcher quite a lot. He'd be like somebody throughout the, the entirety of this franchise. He'd be like my stereotypical like second round pick. He's somebody that I feel like I've drafted several times or at least had on my board and maybe they didn't make it. But um I like Omar Marrero a lot, and if I needed, felt like I needed another pitcher a little bit more maybe, then I, I, I'd take him. Of course, our pitching situation, if you look, this year isn't great, but I feel like we have so many prospects in our pipeline that uh, taking that, another one early, um, unless the draft goes poorly and a lot of the guys I wanted in the second round aren't there, and he, Marrero is, I could see it taking him in the second. Like I said, he's somebody that I think is worth a second from what I'm seeing here. It's just starting pitchers. Not somebody I'm particularly looking for, but uh, only scouted one other guy, and uh, he didn't end up looking that great. This is more of a more of a like fifth or sixth round player. Uh, those are the only two starting pitchers I've scouted in this entire class. Just a couple of discovery guys. Spent more time, of course, um, on the relievers and the closers, looking for maybe a long term. Uh, or maybe even short-term upgrade over Bartolo Ordonez. Like I, we saw earlier on in this episode even, I'm not a super big fan of our closing situation. And so I would love to spend my second on a closer should one make it. Let's talk about David Jefferson. Um, has really good hits per nine and walks per nine. Doesn't have like the great strikeouts per nine that you want from a closer. But uh, I think he can develop it. Not the highest upside ever, but I think it's solid. And then a uh, pretty decent pitch mix. I, he has really three pitches, even though he has four here. But uh, I'd like a changeup. Other than that, I, can't, I think he has a pretty good pitch mix. Pretty good ratings as well. Walks per nine is going to help him in simulation. 
Another guy here, Jamie James, somebody that we discovered here and uh, not the greatest uh, velocity, which I do want like somebody that can throw a bit hard as as a closer. So I'd say he's probably towards the bottom end of, of what I want at the closer position. Um, but he does have, you know, four pitches. He just has no no true fastball as the cutter. Um, but strikeouts per nine are, are in a really good spot, which of course is is a good spot for, for a pitcher. Also, walks per nine is high as well. So I think that's a pretty in, intriguing um, kind of top two skills in, in terms of his per nines. I just think I'd like it. I like a little bit of velocity out of my closer, and that's probably my one big problem with him. Also, his control is going to be pretty horrid as well. Um, and then closers that I like, there's mainly two that I want to talk about. Let's start with Rodney Olson. He's somebody hits per nine is going to be excellent. Strikeouts per nine is going to be in a pretty good spot as well. Home runs per nine is going to be pretty bad, which is a concern. I feel like it's less of a concern with the closer though. Uh, he has. A true like four pitch mix, which I like. Not gonna have the highest velocity, but I think he might have enough here. Um, the fastball, curveball, slider, cutter. Like that four pitch mix for him. And our scouts think he's the best player in the class, and so I feel like he's gonna probably be on the high end of that, you know, overall and potential range. Derek Huntley is the other guy that I would consider high in this class. Great velocity and break, which you know I like. Hits per nine, strikeouts per nine, good spot as well. He is officially my favorite closer prospect and the guy that I am hoping makes it to our second round pick because he is my favorite second round pick option. Unless, of course, uh, Mark Eller makes it to the second round and he actually ends up being pretty good. That would be a pretty hard decision to me for me to make between Eller and a closer. Um, should they, if like Huntley and Eller are both there, that's going to be tough for me to decide. Um, uh, on who, who to take in that situation and so there you have it that's kind of the main portion of this draft i mean i could talk about maybe more guys i'm interested in the fourth or the fifth round but i don't know if that's super interesting i think um previewing the guys that i like at the top of this class is is much more important than maybe the guys that might be available later and to be honest there's not that and the reason i don't think you know it's great to spend a lot of time on the fourth fifth and sixth round prospects just because they're not really good and there's no way to tell really if they're going to even be there and so and a lot of them aren't even scouted so uh we'll talk about those guys should we end up drafting them well in the next episode we've got the drafts open for like maybe a garrett Guerra huntley slash eller combo to start off or and if we can get Guerra and cordova or something that would be super sick whatever it is though i'm pretty confident we'll be able to get at least two or three prospects that we'll really like coming out of this draft with and um that's all i've got for this episode we will be back soon with another and i will see you then